inside this port, there is a Dutch village. We are not sure if we are on the right way. It's the first time I see a cricket stadium. Hi, we, we are, are the, the Lifetime, Lifetime Travel Mates. Mates. For the next few weeks, we are going to take you on a journey around Sri Lanka. Starting in Colombo, the capital of the country, we are going to explore our way down to the south coast. And we will slowly move to the mountains in the central highlands. Overcharging a little bit. We will be traveling by train, bus, tuk-tuk, jeep, bike and boat. On these adventures, we are going to experience the culture and history of Sri Lanka, the food, the spectacular beaches on the coast, the beautiful nature in the mountains, the popular tourist spots, we need to find a hostel, and some hidden gems. Backpackers life. Previously on Lifetime, Lifetime Travel Mates. Mates. Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, was the first stop of our journey. There, we explored the busy streets of Peta with its market and the impressive Red Mosque. We also had time to visit the Gangara Maya temple and to have a small glimpse of Buddhism in the city. Our next stop was the beautiful town of Tikadua. There, we stayed with Bodhi and his family in a nice guest house where we could pick our own king coconut. We had so much fun snorkeling, hanging out with Bodhi, and just chilling and walking along the wonderful Hikadu. Beach. That small town on southwestern coast of Sri Lanka was a great choice to start our travels around the island. It set the bar high up and got us excited for what would come next. Bodhi took us to the bus station and we got on a local bus to Okay. Bye. Get in, get in. One of the good things of traveling in rainy season is that there are less tourists, but the downside is that you can't avoid the sudden rain showers. We just arrived in Unawatuna and it's raining crazy. We expect the sun, but we we'll have to wait for the sun, I guess. And if it's raining, we might have to take a tuk-tuk to our guest house and wait for the rain to go away. The rain didn't seem like stopping anytime soon, so instead of walking, we took a tuk-tuk to get to our accommodation. As soon as we arrived at our guest house, we dropped our backpacks and headed out to Unawatuna Beach. We saw many accommodations and restaurants along the beach and decided to have some lunch there. We have the prams curry, pineapple curry, eggplant curry, some veggies with garlic, sambal, coconut, and the mango chutney. Very soft, very mild. And of course, rice. That fantastic feast put us into a coma. So we went back to the guest house and since it was raining, we took an epic nap hoping the weather would be better on the next day so we could do a jungle trek. We're going to the jungle beach. Jungle beach is called the hidden paradise of Unawatuna. Many tourists end up paying for snorkeling trips that include a boat ride from Unawatuna beach. But there's a tip for you to save some money and enjoy a little adventure. You can actually get there by yourself if you're ready for some jungle trek like us. Since our guest house was between the main Unawatuna beach and the jungle beach, we decided to take this morning trek while saving us the boat trip cost. But we are not sure if we are on the right way. Because we left our phones with the map at home and we're just carrying the essentials, the snorkeling stuff and the bag to leave, like a towel 
and think we are on the right way. Really this way? Shit. It seems we are almost there. We've been walking, what, 10, 15 minutes from the guest house. We are going down now, so it seems we're gonna reach the beach very soon. After 30 minutes of jungle trekking, we arrived at the jungle beach. There was almost nobody and the beach was all for ourselves. We couldn't wait to explore the underwater in this hidden snorkeling spot. Since we saw lots of fish and even turtles in Hikadua, our expectations were high. Actually, we didn't see as many different fish as we saw in Hikatua, but still we really enjoyed snorkeling in this peaceful area. When we were about to leave the place, we saw something that we had never seen before. Cuttlefish are cephalopods, meaning head food and closely related to octopus and squids. They contain a cattle bone to regulate their buoyancy. They are masters of camouflage. They can mimic and shape the texture of objects around them and cuttlefish males disguise themselves as females facing a larger female. How amazing is that? In the afternoon, we took a local bus from Unawatuna to the city of Gaul to visit the Gaul Fort, also called the Dutch Fort, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a must-visit place if you're in the southwest coast of the country. Inside this fort, there is a Dutch village. We're gonna walk around the fort first and maybe later we're gonna explore the, the village. Located only less than 7 kilometers from Unawatuna Beach, the Gulf Fort is visited not only by many tourists as a day trip from Unawatuna, but also by locals seeking some different experience. The Gulf Fort was first built by the Portuguese and then it went through extensive changes in the 17th century by the Dutch, making it one of the most important archaeological, architectural and historic monuments illustrating the European influence in Southeast Asia between the 16th and 19th centuries. The whole fort is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and nowadays the old buildings are transformed into trendy shops, cafes and restaurants. This time, one of our friends we met on the road joined us on our gold trip. <laughs> we met Victor for first time in a hostel in Madurai when we were traveling around South India. Later, we ran into him again in the beautiful hill town Kodai Canal in the state of Tamil Nadu. We did the foggy mountain trek together, played some games and it was a fun day. We kept in touch and here we are, we meet again in a different country. Careful, eh? <laughs> the fort's wall provides a beautiful view over the city and the sea. Wandering around the Gulf Fort, we totally forgot that we were in Sri Lanka. It felt more like being in a European city instead. Guess what? It's the first time I see a cricket stadium with my own eyes. Is it? Goal Cricket Stadium. And we just read it has a capacity of 35,000 people. Where? Where do they people? Where do they stand? At night, more restaurants and bars open and the Dutch village becomes alive with more visitors to enjoy the nice atmosphere at night but we had to get back to our hostel before it got too dark. 
Don't forget to check the Lifetime Travelmates online merchandise store. Here you will find t-shirts, sweatshirts, accessories, and other cool stuff. All the designs are created by ourselves, inspired by our travel stories. These help supporting our channel, and all we make from the sales goes straight back to the channel. After a short stay in Unawatuna, we moved to Mirisa, another small beach town on the south coast of Sri Lanka in the district of Mbantara. As soon as we checked in our accommodation, we went to Mirisa Beach to climb up the Parrot Rock. Parrot Rock is just about 50 meters from the Mirisa Beach and visitors have to walk through the water to reach the rock. The water can be waist high depending on the tide and time of the day. Anyway, you can't avoid getting wet, so we went there with only our swimming suit on. Once across the water, there is a staircase leading you to the top of the rock. We were astonished by the beautiful sceneries around us and sat down for a while to enjoy the spectacular views. After that, we walked along the Mirisa beach waiting for the sunset. The sunset was incredible. We sat on a table of a city restaurant on the beach. There, drinking beer and admiring the sunset, we felt so lucky and blessed to be in that beautiful place. Backpacking has its ups and downs. Sometimes you have a hard day and the weather puts you in a bad mood, or you get tired of a hot and bumpy bus ride. And sometimes you feel yourself surrounded by the beauty of nature and your travel companion. In moments like that, we look back and feel that the decision we made of leaving our daily routines and starting a full-time travel life was the right one. And we also look forward, excited for what comes next on our Sri Lanka adventure. On the next episode of A Journey Exploring Sri Lanka. We'll have to wake up early in the morning to do one of the best things to do in Sri Lanka. Go deep into the sea for whale watching. After that, we will go to the popular photo spot, the Coconut Tree Hill, to watch the amazing sunset in Mirisa Beach. We will go further to Polena Beach, the turtle paradise that we fell in love with and made us stay longer than we planned. And we will be moving to a new location, leaving the coast behind. Thanks for watching till the end of this episode. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And share this video with your friends. If you want to support our channel and be part of our content creation, you can become one of our patrons or join our YouTube channel membership. Members can choose among different tires to support us. Each tire will unlock benefits and give you access to behind the scenes, early access to future videos, unreleased footage, and many more exclusive contents and perks. The music you hear on this series is provided by Epidemic Sound. It is a super helpful service for content creators who need copyright-free music. Epidemic Sound is a home for artists with excellent music quality and a big variety of genres and styles. Check the link on the description to get 30 days of free copyright music.